In order to truly understand acceleration, we need to look at how it's represented on a position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. The relationships and graph shapes that it creates tells us a lot about the nature of acceleration and how it relates to other variables we've learned about. Let's go back to our definition of acceleration. It's the rate at which velocity changes over time. We no longer are dealing with a constant velocity where velocity stays exactly the same. As time increases, velocity increases or decreases. We're really looking at how quickly an object speeds up or slows down. The unit of acceleration is meters per second squared, which is derived from velocity, meters per second, over time, seconds. Acceleration, just like displacement and velocity is a vector unit or vector quantity. The direction or sign of the acceleration points where the velocity is or was the greatest. The overall sign of acceleration as a whole though has to do with both the direction of the acceleration and the direction of the object. The first of our three graphs is the position versus time graph. Position is plotted on the y-axis. The unit is meters. Time is plotted on the x-axis. The unit is in seconds. This is why we call it a position versus time graph. Velocity is the slope. We know this because rise over run, meters over seconds. If we have a unit for the slope of meters per second, that represents velocity. From this graph, we can find a couple different pieces of information. Displacement. We can interpolate. So when we use interpolation, that means that we read the graph. So if I want to know the displacement at 4 seconds, I just read the graph. It's 30 meters. If I wanted to find the velocity, we know that the slope of a meter per second, or sorry, a position versus time graph represents velocity. So I'm going to find the slope. However, in the case of acceleration, because velocity is changing, the slope keeps changing as time goes up. The slope is getting steeper, which means velocity is getting faster. There is no way on this graph to find acceleration. It's impossible to derive acceleration directly from a position versus time graph. There are some tendencies when reading or interpreting a position versus time graph. Any graph that goes up is moving forward. Any graph that goes down is moving backwards. This makes sense looking back to constant velocity. A positive slope was moving forward or a positive velocity was moving forward where a negative slope or negative velocity was moving backwards. This goes the same with those curve or more quadratic shapes. Those parabolas represent acceleration. As they curve towards these two asymptotes, these two invisible lines that the graph will not hit, but it will curve towards. If the graph curves towards slowing down, so if it's a sideways opening parabola, or an inverse relationship, it's going to curve towards the horizontal line. This means it's slowing down. If your graph curves towards the vertical asymptote, that invisible line, it's speeding up. The second graph we'll be looking at is a velocity versus time graph. Velocity is plotted on the y-axis in meters per second. Time is plotted on the x-axis in seconds. Acceleration is the slope. We know this because rise over run, meters per second, over seconds. That gives us meters per second squared. A velocity versus time graph can tell us a few pieces of information. The displacement is represented by the area underneath the graph. Here I used common shapes like rectangles and triangles to calculate the area. I use them because they are simple to calculate. The area of a rectangle is length times width. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. In order to find the velocity on a velocity versus time graph, I'm going to use interpolation, which means I'm going to read the graph. So at 3 seconds, the object is moving 20 meters per second. At 6, or between 6 and 7 seconds, the object is moving about 
40 meters per second, maybe about 42 meters per second. Just read the graph to find the velocity. In order to find acceleration, we need to use the slope of the line. All velocity versus time graphs will be straight lines, either positive slopes, negative slopes, or zero horizontal slopes. So let's look at C to D. That is a positive slope, so we have a positive acceleration. Here we have a negative slope, so we have a negative acceleration. Here we have zero slope, so that's a zero acceleration. A horizontal line on a velocity versus time graph represents a constant velocity. It's a constant velocity of about 42 meters per second. There are some tendencies to observe when reading a velocity versus time graph. All values or all graph shapes that exist above the line, above that x-axis are forward. Below the x-axis is backwards. This is because these values exist on the y-axis. The positive end or the upper end of the y-axis is positive velocity. Positive velocity because it's a vector quantity. Positive means forward. All the values below or all the graph shapes below are in the negative side of velocity. Negative velocity means a negative direction or backwards. Because the sign of velocity helps us determine really only whether the object's going forward or backwards, we can think in terms of absolute values. That y-axis acts as a big number line, with the very middle being zero. The further we get away, the bigger the absolute value. So if we're talking about velocity, we're talking about faster velocities further away. As you move in closer and closer, you're going to have slower velocities as those numbers get slower or lower and lower, approaching zero. Dead center is zero meters per second. Any graph that is plotted on that line has a slope of zero and a velocity of zero. We see acceleration when we move from one velocity to another. We're looking at that change in velocity. You can almost think of this graph as a stoplight that goes in both directions. In the middle, we have stop. As we move further away, the velocity gets faster and fastest. If we were to start at stop, and then the object moved a little faster, and then a lot faster, we would see acceleration that looks like this. It's moving forward and it's speeding up. The graph is moving up, which is meaning away from stop. It's speeding up. Because it's on the top half, it is now forward. The second part of this graph, it stays going that same velocity. This is now constant velocity. If we were to go from a faster velocity and then slow down, and stop, we would see a graph shape like this. The graph points towards the center because it's going from fast to stop. It's slowing down. <clears throat> the object's also going backwards because it's on the bottom half of the graph. If that object stayed at that velocity, at a constant velocity, it would be stopped. Any horizontal line that's plotted or graphed on that axis, on the x-axis, represents an object that is stopped. It's at a constant velocity of zero meters per second. The third and final graph we'll be learning is acceleration versus time. In this graph, acceleration is plotted on the y-axis in meters per second. Time is plotted on the x-axis in seconds. The slope or meaning of the slope of this graph is not important to what we'll be learning in this course. From an acceleration versus time graph, it's impossible to find displacement. We can find velocity by looking at the area underneath or above the graph. So we're looking at the area relative to the x-axis in the middle. In order to find acceleration, we just interpolate. So I'm going to read the graph. So at about one and a half seconds, the acceleration's one meters per second. At 4 seconds, the acceleration is negative 2 meters per second. 
All acceleration versus time graphs will comprise of horizontal lines. You cannot have acceleration that is changing over time. If it does change, we'll see a quick shift, and that's what that vertical line represents. That means we went from acceleration of 1 meters per second squared, and then we shifted to negative 2 meters per second squared. Acceleration versus time graphs are a little bit harder to read because we're only looking at horizontal lines above or below the graph. The only information we know is that they are above or below. Now we can find the exact values, but it doesn't necessarily tell us whether objects are moving forwards, backwards, speeding up, slowing down. However, because we know that in order for acceleration to be positive, both the direction of acceleration and of the velocity need to be pointing in the same direction, we'll see above speeding up forward and slowing down backwards, same direction. When they go opposite, we might see slowing down forward and speeding up backwards.